Hi, my name is Mo Kim. I'm an instructor at Brainstorm School. John Park and James Peck, the owners of Brainstorm School, had asked me to instruct a new class called Rendering One. And in this rendering class, we're going to go through a series of exercises in order for students to better prepare themselves for the more advanced classes. In the first few weeks of the class, you'll be rendering primitives such as cones, spheres, cubes, and cylinders in order for us to better prepare ourselves to render group primitives, which will eventually lead into more complex shapes. We learn also how to plan out cast shadows, as well as learning where to put the highlights in, in order for us to turn shapes with value changes. The ultimate goal of this class is for you to be able to render any type of object in grayscale with any type of lighting setup that you choose. Here's a time lapse on how to render primitives. Plotting shadows could be fairly technical. We're going to be using a lot of tools in Photoshop, such as the gradation tool, as well as the line tool. We have to organize our layers properly so that we have clean edges and clean lines. Now I understand what you're thinking. Uh, how much can we do with primitives? But the lessons we learn in this class regarding primitives is going to be very valuable when you start looking at your environment and then you start trying to figure out how to render things in your environment. You'll be able to see and break down everyday shapes into, as long as you can understand how to render those primitives, you'll be able to render more complex shapes uh, that surround your environment. If you walk down the street or you're driving around, you see buildings. Buildings are made up of cubes, uh, cylinders, sometimes even pyramid shapes. You don't see too many cone buildings, but you get the idea. Basically, you'll be able to start looking at your environment and picking out primitive forms that make up things in your environment. Uh, you can start combining primitives and then building a vehicle out of that, or a prop, or an airplane, or, or a weapon, or a gun. So understanding how to render primitives is actually an invaluable lesson. It's not the sexiest thing to do, uh, is to, you know, to render cubes and primitives and spheres, but it's all part of the process. You have to learn all those little things in order for, your, for you to be able to render, you know, in this case, a baseball, a Rubik's Cube. Um, a cone. So again, although the thought of rendering primitives seems trivial, it's actually a very, very valuable part of learning how to render a vehicle, a building, an environment, you know, even characters, their armor. So again, it's something that shouldn't be taken lightly. In DC1, we do do this primitive exercise as the first week lesson. I've been finding out that people really don't know how to plot cast shadows or to figure out where the core shadows are. We, we talk about the values and such, but first week of class when I throw this on the students, they really don't understand how cast shadows are plotted. So after talking to John and James about the lack of uh, skill in that level, and in combination with what they had already thought of and wanted to offer at Brainstorm School, they had asked me to teach this class. So I'm gonna learn a lot from this class, to be honest. It's been a little bit of time since I've done perspective plotting. However, I do understand the importance of it. And when I had to teach this class and create the syllabus, there are things that I learned. So learning is, is kind of the endless process. You're always gonna be learning and you know, the more I teach, the more I learn as well. So I don't mind, you know, not being the smartest one in the class. You're gonna learn more when you're not the smartest person in the class. That's, you know, from your colleagues, from your, from your instructors for sure, but you know, you'll, you'll learn a lot from the people you meet in the class. I make a point for the students to get to know one another because interaction is one of those things that Brainstorm School has an edge over online education. And I hear it over and over and over from my students. 
when I asked them at the end of the term about the class and what were some of the key points uh, that made them sign up for Brainstorm School. It always comes down to the people you meet, you know, your instructors, but it really comes down to getting that immediate feedback, having the instructor go over your shoulder and point out the things that you're not doing properly to help you out so that you're not waiting for an email response. And for this class, I'd recommend Scott Robertson's book, How to Draw as well as How to Render. How to Draw really talks more about perspective plotting, uh, using construction lines to divide objects, uh, using construction lines for scale. Uh, but the How to Render book teaches you how to plot cast shadows using light rays and shadow lines. So as you can see in this demo, when we're taking a more complex object and plotting things, it can get pretty confusing, even when using the book. So the purpose of this class is for me to kind of go step by step for each individual student to learn the whole process of creating cast shadows. Then we'll get into using values to render an object. You know, we're gonna learn about all the core shadows, cast shadows, bounce lights, highlights, ambient occlusion, so that when you take that line sketch away, you'll be able to have a fully rendered object like what you see on screen. So this is kind of the ultimate test, is how do you render a vehicle, hard surface vehicle, like a tank? And once you learn the principles of values and value changes, and then understanding where to make those changes, you'll be able to render objects like a tank or any type of line sketch very easily. We'll use a lot of layering in Photoshop, a lot of masking, uh, maybe some curves to make this process a lot simpler than it may seem. We also want to stress draftsmanship. So you want to make sure all your edges line up. You're going to have hard shadows and soft shadows where they're supposed to be. Your cast shadows are going to line up as well. Um, we're going to do a lot of line construction to make sure that they do line up properly. And just stress the importance of good draftsmanship. You know, truth be told, for me, designing and line sketching is more difficult than actually rendering. I come from an airbrushing background, not the digital version, but the actual physical tool where I learned how to render with acrylic paints. And using an airbrush forces you to be extremely careful about your values. Uh, one mistake would lead you to basically start over and it's a, a very delicate layering process that you have to go through when you airbrush traditionally. So for me, I've always been good at rendering, um, and I think understanding also the power observation is important when you're trying to render things. If you can't see the details, the value changes, where the highlights and shadows sit, and how they sit, it makes rendering difficult. But most artists have a tendency to see details and notice things that regular people can't. Um, so in that sense, I just try to highlight some of those details that need to be addressed so that your rendering of an object is successful. So once again, Rendering One is a new class. I hope to see a lot of new students there. Again, it's not the most sexiest thing to learn about rendering primitives, but everything around you is made of a grouping of primitive objects. Whether that be a car, an airplane, a gun, a building, or any other type of vehicle or prop. Those are all made up of primitives and and in this industry, as a concept designer, you're going to have to be able to visually show volumes and forms, not only accurately, but also quickly. So 
So once again, my name is Mo Kim, and I'll be teaching Rendering One at Brainstorm School this fall. Thank you. <laughs>